We just had a massive snowstorm in Madrid. I can't ride. I actually fully detailed the SL because I'm supposed to be shooting the long-term review of it this week. Can't do that. So I thought I would do a bike check on all the upgrades I've done on the SL. So let's get into it. Raiders, welcome back to Sands Bikes, where you know we only talk e-bikes. And today, it's about all the upgrades, the custom SL. But before we get into that, a massive shout out to Schwabi, the new sponsor of the channel. Things are getting serious. This is my race jersey for the EWS electric race that is in six months time. And another massive shout out to Night Fox for making me this custom jersey. And riders, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so, share it with like-minded people. It really means a lot. And now on to my custom SL. I've done around 1200 kilometers on the Levo SL and I'm super ready to do my long-term review. I love this bike and I know there'll be a few comments in this video saying, hey Sam, why did you do all these upgrades? Weren't the original parts good enough? Look, if you're new to the channel, you wouldn't know that I love to upgrade bikes. That's my thing. I've always loved to upgrade bikes and the original parts are all up to scratch on this bike, as you would expect they would be for a pretty expensive bike. Okay, so let's start with the frame. The Levo SL, this is a large, I'm 183 centimeters, and the color is the red wood. And the color is kind of like in between an orange and a red. Uh, maybe like when you cut into a grapefruit, it's kind of that color. It is an absolute beautiful color in real life. When I saw it on the website, eh, it didn't really do it justice, but in real life, it's an absolute looker. And the sizing for me at 183 centimeters, I went for a large because it's a trail bike and I kind of feel that uh, we are riding bigger bikes than we actually need at the moment. A lot of the bikes are getting really long and if I wanted to do really hardcore enduro riding on this bike or downhill riding, I probably would have gone for the extra large because it would have made it more stable at high speeds. But very happy with the sizing because it's a trail bike and it's a playful trail bike. Suspension has pretty much stayed unchanged. Put one token in the front, one token in the back, but I am thinking about upping the travel to 160 at the front, probably for summer when things are gonna get a little bit more real. And I changed the brakes out to the Magura MT5Es with the MDRP rotor and the Loric Bruni custom lever. That lever is the best lever I have tried, perfect shape. And as far as the brakes go, I found them to be a little bit in between a SRAM and a Shimano, probably closer to a Shimano with that on off power. Full review of the brake setup coming soon, but just the cliff notes, really happy with the brake setup. So I changed the tires out to a Magic Mary 2.6 trail casing in the soft and a 2.4 big betty in trail casing and soft compound just a note to the riders out there i did put a 2.6 in but i had a little bit of clearance issues and if i'm honest i think a 2.4 is better on a trail bike and riders if you're a big fan of the channel you will know i've been harping on about eddy currents for the last six to nine months they are a great e-bike tire but because the sl is a lighter trail bike I wanted to try a lighter tire. And also, this is a classic setup for the Enduro downhill guys. They have it in the gravity or downhill casing. So I went the trail casing. But for a very quick comparison, I find the outer edge, like the top end turning, so when you're really on the limit, right on the edge knobs, I find more traction on the Magic Mary, but that's right on the limit. And with the Big Betty, the Big Betty's much better in the wet and the mud. Uh, the eddy current sort of bogs up a bit. I would say the eddy current still is my favorite summer tire, but for winter, definitely Big Betty. Give it a go if you haven't tried it. 
And the lovely people at Industry 9 set me up a pair of grade 300 wheels, which are so beautiful. I got them with a red hubs and red spokes. Not only are they beautiful, I love how stiff these wheels are. So they have a really good lateral stiffness with those thick aluminum spokes. So when you're pushing into a corner, you don't get any or minimal flex. So you can really push in. As an XBMXer, you know, like a 20 inch wheel is so stiff and it does kind of remind me of that. I find them really responsive. Definitely a great upgrade and something that I'm gonna have for years. And the beautiful Industry 9 40 mil polished 31.8 stem. I actually have three Industry 9 stems. I ordered the 40 because I had a 30 in the polish on my old decoy. And, and I just thought a 30 would be a bit too short for this trail bike. So I ordered a 40. And it's a stem, it does what it says it does. It's a beautiful stem and I love my Industry 9 stems. And the rental fat bars in 780s in the old aluminium style. I used to have carbon bars, but actually with COVID, they haven't been in stock for a couple of months. Uh, the main difference for me really is the price um, and the look, I think carbon bars look better, but also, Maybe it's in my mind, but I feel because carbon bars are stiffer, you definitely, aluminium bars are, are definitely a little bit more givey. Like, so when you're going downhill, you can feel them flex just a little bit. But I like the carbon bars for that sharp turn. Maybe it's in my mind, I'm not sure. I'll probably upgrade back to carbon bars in the future. And riders, what are you riding? Aluminium or carbon? Let me know. And also, I am looking for a change probably go carbon. Any recommendations would be appreciated because I've been riding rentals for pretty much my whole life, so time for a change. And the grips, DMR Death Grips, hands down the best grips on the market in my opinion. I went for the fat ones with the soft compound and they get better with age. These have got two, two and a half months and they're nice and soft now. It's definitely great to see if DMR killing it in the grip market, Like they're not a big company, and I would say probably worldwide, they're the most popular grips now. And I used to ride ODIs, but definitely riders, if you haven't tried some death grips, give them a go, because they are spot on. And the Garmin mount on the handlebars, it's a basic mount from Garmin, uh, just gets it out of the way. I've got the same mount on both bikes, uh, so I can go out and train on either bikes and it's set up. In 2020, I mainly rode flat pedals. But on the SL, I decided to go back to clips. It just suits this bike better because you do need to put in a little bit more effort. And I always ride with the Shimano Saint SPDs. These pedals have been abused and they are so strong. So if you're looking for a strong pair of pedals, definitely check out the Saints. But riders, the pedals are only half the battle. You need to pair them with a good riding shoe. For the last six months, I've been using the Ride Concept Transitions. And you can see they're pretty damn worn, and uh, but they're holding up really well. And the other day, I smashed a rock with my foot, and I honestly thought I broke my toe. But these things saved the day. I definitely can recommend the transitions. A great riding shoe, super comfortable, and give you loads of protection. And it's nice to support the underdogs. I know riders, I'm a super lucky guy, and I love my Levo SL. But if I could only do one upgrade, it would have to be the tires. Look, I changed the tires out and I instantly felt more confident. I felt I could push the bike like 15 or 20% harder. And the other day I was out riding with Jorge the Punisher and I hit a massive rock, but right on the edge of the sidewall on the back and my whole back end flicked out. I almost crashed. I definitely expected to have a hole in the tire. I instantly just pulled the brakes up and stopped because I thought I had a flat tire and I thought I'd be walking back to the car. Yeah, there was a little mark, but man, for trail casing, those tires are so tough. So definitely for me, the most important upgrade was the tires. And right, as a massive shout out for everyone that's been watching and supporting the channel, it really means so much. And also for Specialized, Magura, Schwabi, Industry 9 and Ride Concepts for supporting the channel as well and letting me test all these amazing products. If you have any questions on any of these products, 
please let me know. I would definitely get back to you. And writers, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Share it with like-minded people. It really means a lot. And stay safe out there. And I'm going to see you next week.